Hi everyone, it is me, Samantha. Welcome back to my channel. Lately, I have kind of drifted away from my roots, which is fine and everything. I do wanna explore other types of content and stuff like that. But I started my channel out as a way to kind of document my transition and give back to my community. When I started my transition, videos like this, talking about surgeries, talking about hormones, talking about literally anything, was so, so helpful to me because growing up, I never really saw any actual trans people. I just saw the people on Jerry Springer. I'm sure you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. We don't have to get into it, but for today, Today's video, I kind of want to bring it back to my basic, back to my roots. What would you say? Back to basics, <laughs> and really get into detail and really open up and be honest about my bottom surgery and the things that I've been going through since I've had my bottom surgery. It's been almost four years since I had the first stage of my vaginoplasty, and I feel like after I had it, I kind of shut down and tried to push it away as much as possible and just kind of forget about everything because I had a really, really hard time healing. I don't know if I ever really talked about it on here, but healing was really really difficult for me i'll get into it in more detail later on after my surgery i was just in such a dark place that i didn't really want to talk about it i didn't really want to have to go back into it and feel all those feelings over again so i just didn't a little disclaimer before i get into everything i did have some complications and i did have some you know concerns that not everybody deals with that being said i want to make it clear that these complications were not at all a result of the way that my surgeons did my surgery. I stand by my surgeons to this day. So the first day after surgery, you are on strict bed rest. You are not allowed to leave your bed at all. On the second day, they get you up, they get you moving around, and they start to build up your, your strength again. They start to get it so that you are able to walk around again. <laughs> it's not until day six or seven, I think, that they take out the packing and you start dilating. If you don't know, dilating is when you take a basically like a medical glass dildo and you put it inside of you and leave it in there for like 20 minutes. It's like an ear piercing. If you don't keep the earring in, it'll close and it'll like seal shut. And obviously you don't want that to happen. So you dilate four times a day for the first couple weeks and then you go down to three times and you go down to twice a day and then you eventually wean off of it. <laughs> like a drug, you wean off of it. Again, I talked about dilating before. I have vlogs and stuff from way back then when I was having the surgery done, where I went into more detail about, you know, the schedule that they had me on, how to dilate, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in more details about that kind of stuff, you can go watch the little video wherever it is gonna pop up. After nine days, you are allowed to leave the hospital and you're allowed to go home. And at this point, I was feeling really, really good. I remember that I wasn't as healed as some of the other girls that were there and that gave me a lot of, you know, worry, obviously. The nurses said it was fine and everything though, so I was like, okay, fine, shit, all right, sounds good. I do remember them saying though that I was experiencing a little bit of dehiscence, which is basically when you are so swollen that the sutures that they put down there to keep everything sewn together start to rip open and basically you get like a hole in your body. It was as bad as it sounds, just to be perfectly real with you guys. So the night that I left the hospital, me and my mom were staying overnight in a hotel and then we had a plane ride home the next day. Went to dilate again that night and I think that I moved a stitch or something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened and I was in excruciating pain. It felt like literally somebody had like shot me or stabbed me or burned me or something down there and I could not escape the feeling. Up until that point, it was kind of like if I moved a certain way, I would feel like a pinch or a pull or something and I could, you know, move back to where I was and it would kind of relax. After I got that sensation, it didn't go away. I could lay on my left, I could lay on my right, my back, my stomach, like upside down, it was not going away. We ended up calling my surgeon who said that it was okay to take an extra like half of you know, pain medicine to get me to go to sleep that night. And then the next day she was actually like out of town at a conference and she ended up coming directly to our hotel room off of her plane to see what was going on and just like help us. Immediately she was like disinfecting her hands, you know, getting out all of her equipment. And I don't know what she did, but she fixed it. <laughs> I don't know if she like trimmed a stitch that was poking me or something, or I don't even know, but it went away. We ended up spending an extra day in Phoenix because I was so afraid to fly home. I didn't want to sit on a plane for six hours, you know, in excruciating pain. So we stayed an extra day and by that point I was feeling good enough to go home. So we did. I don't know if that was a bad decision or if I maybe didn't get up enough on the plane or something, but I ended up getting a lot more swollen after that and the dehiscence got a lot worse. So once I was back in my own house, I just remember like going to dilate and the dehiscence, which started out being this big at like the bottom of the incision, went up to like this big. It was terrifying. I remember like, bawling my eyes out saying like, what did I do? 
Like, what did I do to myself? I fucked myself up. I'm never gonna heal from this. I don't know, like, how is this gonna be okay? Like, I'm gonna have a hole in my body for the rest of my life. Because of that, my healing time went from the average of two weeks to about four and a half to five weeks. And like I said, that was at the end of July and I went back to college, I think the 3rd of September. So I had literally like four weeks to heal before I had to go and walk around a campus five days a week. I remember getting to school and still not being fully healed from the dehiscence. I remember I still had to put like medications and you know, gauze and stuff down there, going out to fucking frat parties and stuff. Good thing about the way that Dr. Meltzer and Dr. Lay do the surgery is they do it in two parts. The first part, they were able to move everything around and get all the tissue and you know, stuff where it needed, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> get all the tissue and everything where it needed to be. And then in the second part is when they go in and do all the details and they go in and they like fine tune it, if you will. And I think that that was really, really necessary for me because if I had gotten that swollen and all that dehiscence had happened, I don't know if things would like look good. It allowed me to heal and, you know, get over all of that really, really tough, painful stuff. Once I had the second part, they were able to remove any of the scarring that I didn't like or anything like that. And it was almost like none of that had ever happened. Whereas if I had just had a one part surgery, all of those complications and all of that scarring and stuff would still be there. After the surgery, I had to dilate four times a day and then three times a day down to two times a day, blah, blah, blah. And I think that once I got into college, I was down to two times a day, luckily. But even that was so difficult to keep up with. I was running to classes and I had like 45 minutes between classes to dilate. and was just not enough time. I wasn't dilating as much as I should have been and I ended up losing probably like a half an inch of depth. I know it's not that much, but I mean, it was enough to scare me. I went back for my labioplasty and I had told them and they had found out they were really upset with me. They were like, girl, this is an expensive, lifelong permanent surgery. You cannot be fucking it up like this. You need to follow the rules. Like, what are you doing? I remember starting to cry in the surgeon's office because I was like, I'm depressed and I'm in school. It's painful. Like, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to be going through. Luckily, the second part of the surgery wasn't nearly as painful. I was able to just stay overnight in the hospital opposed to, you know, nine days in the hospital. Recovered in probably about two to three weeks, um, completely back to normal, which was, you know, a fraction of the time it took me to heal from the first part. Functionally, I mean, like going to the bathroom and stuff is obviously something that needs to work down there. And that was never an issue for me. Fortunately, it was never, it was never an issue, so. Yeah. Another thing that I was concerned about prior to surgery, and I made a video about it actually, um, was hair. So when you go to have the surgery done, you need to have electrolysis done in that area for I think like three sessions um, before you go in. I had, I think done like two, but all the hair that they recommend be removed was not yet removed. And that kind of concerned me because I had read horror stories about people like growing hair inside their vagina. And like, I didn't want that to happen, obviously. <laughs> Fortunately, that was never a problem for me. Um, I know they do like follicle scraping during the surgery where they literally like flip your skin inside out and like scrape all the hair follicles off. So I guess that worked. Thank God, because I do not want anything going on inside there. That shouldn't be going on inside there. For the next few months, I kind of just laid low, let everything heal and just kind of went on about my life. The next challenges came when I started to be more sexually active. People don't really talk about it, but when you have this surgery, there's a lot of anxiety that comes afterwards. So like, yeah, I have these parts now, but now I have these mental blocks in my mind that won't let me use them because it's, there's just so much that goes into it. You know, there's there's judgment. What if people think that I look weird down there? It sounds so stupid, but like, I, I don't want to be judged for something like that. There's also a lot of pressure, you know, like everything is so new down there. I don't know what anything feels like. I don't know where anything like is, like to be honest, like it's just so different. And then there's also the concern over safety. Like what if I go to have sex with somebody and it rips open and I bleed out and die? Like, I don't think that's gonna happen, but like what if it does? So once I started to be more sexually active, like with my boyfriend and stuff, it really messed with my head. Before I had surgery, the physicality of it was enough. I'm not gonna go into details or anything, but sex was purely physical. And then after I had surgery, it was a lot more difficult to like get there, you know what I'm saying? Like it sounds so weird to talk about, but it's the truth and it like it messed me up. Like I thought, did I make a mistake? Did I like that better? Like what's wrong with me? Why am I having these thoughts? And the fact of the matter is it was, it was just easier. I actually had surgery pretty recently um, down there to address a complication that I had. This other complication that I had is actually a lot more common. Once all the swelling started to go down and because I was dilating and stuff like that, it was a little bit of tissue that get really like swollen almost. Um, and I know that happens to like cis girls too, but just because 
of the location of it and made it really hard for um, things to like go inside. <laughs> it probably about another two weeks to get back into my normal life after that surgery, but I also had work up here done that, um, you know, made it take a little bit longer. So I had that surgery done in January and it's mid-April now, high quarantine. Day to day, I don't really think about, you know, what I have between my legs anymore, which is all I wanted from this. Before I had surgery, I would constantly think about it. I would constantly be afraid that people would see it. And I was petrified of ever being intimate with somebody because I could not, I could not deal with them seeing me with that. Like I just, I just could not. I could. That was why I decided to have the surgery, but you know, it's different for everybody. But yeah, I hope this has answered any questions that you guys have. Um, if it didn't, feel free to leave your question down below and I will answer it in the comment section. If it's appropriate, don't be fucking nasty. Thank you guys so much for watching and allowing me to be so open and so blunt about everything going on and still supporting me. If you do want a more uplifting, funny video, go check out my last video when I went on to Monkey again. Kinda cringy, but I mean, that's what you guys like for a monkey video, right? Cringy as fuck. But yeah, other than that, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up, a comment down below, subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.